Hey guys, it is June 8, 2022. It is 11.02 in uh, night. Um, today has been, well, tonight has been a very interesting evening. And we want to share some things with you um, that just happened in the last few hours. Um, today, uh, while I was at home, I could not I was in God's Word I had my Bible spread out and I had just I had my pen and paper and I had thoughts running through my head I just could not get anything on paper at all every time I uh, would start something God would say nope I would start something again God would say nope and it happened all day long and so I just spent time just reading his word this afternoon and I get a text from from melvin and said that we're gonna go to this church tonight he felt god was leading us to this church so of course i am very unsure about this and uh we get there and i'll tell you myself i'll let you feel hella him fill in the blanks of what he experienced today and we get there and as we're walking up the sidewalk um the lead pastor is coming down the sidewalk to you know tell anybody hi to this that and the other and um melvin introduces himself and says uh asked if you know there's a possibility for him to share his testimony because that's the reason why god led us there and something that he said immediately there was a check in my spirit he says all of our five services are structured and we do them all the same and that he could interview melvin to do um a, a video for all the services and that really really bothered me because my first thought was if you're services are structured they're le that leaves no room for the holy spirit and the one of the door greeters we met her and you know just the feeling i got from her i was very uneasy and needless to say whenever we sat through some of the service um my hand didn't stop writing i didn't have a problem writing what god was showing me immediately in the church service so you want to fill in some blanks before all that happened uh earlier today i had uh i had gone to a another church and i felt like god was had led me there and I sat down with the pastor for about an hour and a half and um, through the course of uh, the uh, the time that I was listening to uh, him and him listening to me um, the orphanage had come up and he was trying to direct me in how to go about doing the orphanage stuff and I told him I said that's not what I'm here for <clears throat> I'm here to uh, uh, share my testimony tonight <clears throat> and he said well you can't do that because you're not a member of the church <clears throat> and uh, I was like going well don't you bring people in to do like a concert or something like that special music special music missionaries our missionaries i said i'm a missionary god told me to and michelle to move to uh east tennessee to start a uh, uh, a mission which is starting an orphanage orphanage well yeah we we uh we do do that they just have to be uh part of where we give money to and then we'll let them come in at that point <clears throat> and he said a couple of other things that was just really really strange he was talking about the state getting kids out of uh, bad situations you know physical abuse or whatever and uh, and he said that the state the state is uh will allow uh, a same-sex married couple 
get a child that has come out of physical abuse and and all of that are and put them in these homes and he said he said the weirdest thing he said he was okay with that and i went what to myself and then i said out loud i said i'm not okay with that that is not teaching children how to be one with God. That's teaching them the, the, the total opposite. And then he kind of started backpedaling and all of that in what he had said. <clears throat> he kind of realized that he had, he had messed up. Open mouth, insert foot. <clears throat> yeah, he opened his mouth and inserted his foot. And he just let out the, the false teaching and the false doctrine that he was okay with. You know? It's that uh, they're okay. They won't be too bad on a kid that's been physically abused or mentally abused or, or whatever. He's compromising. Uh, he's compromising his beliefs as a pastor to say, well, it's okay. We'll just go along with what the world says and and all and I was immediately like I'm not okay with that so I uh, I left there and uh, ended up at a different church because all day long I knew that God was telling me to go tell our testimony somewhere I ended up at another church and uh, which is the one that Michelle was just describing about and I met the associate pastor which he was greeting uh, people as they come in at the service and uh, I asked to speak with the pastor and he said that's not gonna happen and I said well I want to I want to give my testimony he said well that ain't gonna happen either and after us going through that service, you know, and, and hearing what they were talking about, because the, the associate pastor told me that the video uh, is a testimonial video about generosity. So I was kind of curious about what that would be. And like Michelle said, we went to the service and I was blown away by what the video was actually about. I got my notes. <laughs> so I'm going to let Michelle take over again. And since she did all the note taking, I was just I was just in the service going, God, why in the world have you got us in this place? It made no that, sense. That this is just total crap. So anyway, here, here's Michelle again. <laughs> so like I said, my, my hand did not stop writing at all. And the first thing that we noticed, well, and, and I, what I thought you might share too was about the first song that they sung. Oh, about the testimony. I about, can't remember what the name of it is. I, I don't even know what the name of it is. I know, all I know is it talks about telling your testimony. Yeah, and I was just like, you're not letting letting me tell my testimony like God told me to do. Right. You know? I mean, both pastors and the associate pastor at these two churches just flat out said, no, you're not going to do that. I'm like, okay. Which their structure, the, the first pastor you mentioned that you talked to earlier today before the church that we attended tonight was... You had to be a member there. Well, not only that, but you said something about what the service, how the service that, uh, how did you put it? How did, how did he say that? Was saved for him? Oh, and, and like Sunday mornings was saved for him doing what he wanted to do. Yeah. I'm like going, are you serious? And there again, that leaves God. It was all God, about him. Right. That leaves God out of the equation completely. Just like the church that we attended tonight. 
you know, the pastor said something about structure. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I understand the fact that they have so many people, which in another sense, that is scary that they have a lot of people because of the fact of what they're teaching and what they're doing. You know, we walk into this sanctuary, well, auditorium, concert, whatever concert you want. Hall, it, it was a concert hall because you've got the smoke and you've got the lights and you got, I mean, the lights are just moving and it looked like a concert. You know, and my thoughts were, when has when did when did God's word become not enough to just preach and teach about that you have to upstage it with smoke and lights and blaring music? You know, when is God's when did it become that God's word isn't enough? And so, like Melvin said, the the uh, message was on generosity, which I wouldn't really call it a message. By no means. No. Um, Not at all. Because he started off with the video. There again, smoke and lights, and you got this video. And in the video, you know, they're talking about giving people gas cards. You know, they're they're at the the gas station and they're going asking people, you know, hey, could you spare some money? And and if a person says yes or gives them money, then they in turn give them. Well, I, because you show generosity to me. A kindness to me I'm gonna do this for you and with one particular person they're going I'm here's here's you fifty dollars well here's you another fifty well here's you another fifty well here's you another fifty you know they would give them like two two hundred fifty dollars just to that one person am I not right and that what happened to yeah. that to several in that video yeah and you know the next person they would get here's a fifty dollar gift card here's a fifty dollar bill and you know just giving out and giving out and giving out and I was cringing while I was writing but God just would kept giving me these words and I just kept writing and so I'm going to read some of, of and, and, and then the, the pastor decides to start telling jokes and I maybe heard one scripture and I'm not really sure to pertain to anything of what I don't even <laughs> Honestly, I well, don't remember anything he said. Well, the, the, the scriptures were written down, which I thought was funny because he gave give us this pamphlet to, to look at. And um, these scriptures that he's using are written on here. And I thought, well, you kind of missed one. But like Mel and I were discussing earlier is because it, it's the complete opposite. It's, it's what Jesus taught. He was doing the exact opposite of, of what it says in Matthew, of what Jesus' words were saying. But anyways, we'll get to that in a minute. So I, I wrote all these questions down and all these stuff. It, of course, it says, uh, why is God's word not enough? You know, why do people feel that they have to upstage in order to get people interested in God? You know, when did God become not enough? When did God's word become not enough? And... Uh, so, uh, talking about the video, and this is this is really what bothered me, was that here they are making a video about them giving. It was like, look, we've got the money. We can do this and this and this and this. And look at all the money that we can give away. And that really, really bothered me. And I'm going to borrow your phone for just a second because I'm going to look up the scripture. So, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. One through doo, 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 four. It talks about the teaching of about giving to the needy. It says, "Watch out! Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired for, by others, for you will lose your reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call the attention to their acts of charity." I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Which is the exact opposite of what this pastor did with this video. Because he was publicly saying, oh, here you go, here you go, here you go. And... Of course, they would give them something to show them where their money was coming from. 
because there was one person that says, oh, I'm going to send, tell my kid to come to here at such and such church. Anything you want to add? <laughs> no. It's just... No, you keep going. <laughs> so, so that the the whole the whole message of what he was doing you know what they were i was sitting there just watching all of this like mike mill said we're just in awe of this crap that was going on and you know they said they had five services and this is insane of the amount of people that these people are teaching and it's going against what god's word says so you know he talked okay. about let, sorry, me, let me let me interrupt just a second before he starts the video, he says almost, this is almost word for word what he says, the head pastor. This will be the best service that you'll ever be in. Yep. I'm so excited about this service and what is going to happen during this service and after. And yeah. I'm like going, okay, I'm listening. And then this video starts and everything else. And I'm ready to leave. <laughs> like, you know. I write on my piece of paper on the other one, not the one that I'm actually writing my notes on. <laughs> right after like... the video is over, I'm, before he even starts speaking, I'm ready to get up and leave. I was like, are you ready to go? <laughs> Yeah, she writes because I mean, I, I have this check in my spirit, but I know I need to finish out my thoughts of what God has given me because of is it, it, it was just mind blowing. So, the structuring of the of the, uh, the services. Well, let me read what I wrote on that one. Structuring every service leaves no room for the Holy Spirit. It leaves God at the door, limiting God to move within the church because He is left outside. Meanwhile inside the church, air quotes, createdness creates feelings, which is a temporary feeling, not an intimate, deep relationship. And it's funny because, you know, we had just met a couple and, and shared with them about uh, structured, you know, the structured service, and the wife immediately... immediately this is after the service. Yes, yeah, after we... This is, we'll get to that later. And after God had shown us 675 like four times within 20 minutes and I knew that that was something that God was trying to say about that service that we had just talked about absolutely with and this I, couple that we met at Wendy's and because of the shirts that we had on they start talking to us first yes so we sit down and we start we have this we to have this conversation we shut Wendy's down blah 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 we, it ain't nothing new with us we shut restaurants down all the time <laughs> um, but anyways uh, but what she says is spot on of what my words came out of my mouth earlier to Melvin I said that leaves no room for the Holy Spirit when you have structured services and that's what she said and she said the exact same thing word for word of what you said yes absolutely and so my next thing is where you know the the pastor starts telling jokes i don't remember the joke i just remember him making a joke and everybody laughing i'm not sure what all about but i wrote down I what laugh. i was trying to figure out how to get out of it <laughs> <laughs> why does a pastor feel the need to make jokes rather than to preach god's word hell is no joking matter our pastors the one like this are they going to be laughing while their entire congregation is headed to hell? And those were my words. That's exactly what I wrote. And, uh, let's see. Yep, and that's and I had the, the Matthew chapter 6 verse about him giving. So, the, so, after we had met this couple at Wendy's, um, we, uh, I said, Michelle, look at my Bible at page 675 because I'm, I feel like that this is uh, something about <coughs> what we experienced at this church. And uh, I'm on the wrong... Psalm 79. Uh, anyway, um, One. we uh, <coughs> were driving on a road and before she even says what uh, 
is on that page, I see 274 on the odometer. And I said, this is the Bible. There's something on that page that God is saying about that church. Mm -hmm. And this is the verse that Michelle <laughs> finds on that page. Yeah, it's Psalm one. 79, verse 1. O oh God, pagan nations have conquered your land, your special possession. They have defiled your holy temple and made Jerusalem a heap of ruins. <laughs> I went, you've got to be kidding me. God hit it spot on. <clears throat> he gave me and Michelle the insight through these numbers to recognize something was off in that church. <clears throat> and after we had been at that church, I'm talking, it wasn't even 30 seconds after leaving that church, these, this 675 mm -hmm. starts popping up. Yeah. It was three of them within God, two minutes. Two minutes after yeah. leaving this church, it was back to back to back. Yeah, two minutes. Two of them in a in a parking lot. Same one, yeah. In the same parking lot. Yeah. And another one, uh, about ten minutes after that. Yep. So I knew it was something about this church, you know. And I love how God is so specific and it's so spot on with us. And when we get a check in our spirit about something, you know, he's confirming whenever we get that check or mm -hmm. we know something ain't right, we can go to God's word by these numbers that he shows us and we can find exactly what we felt sitting in that church. Mm -hmm. We felt like that that pastor has defiled the word of God. No gosh, yes. In the in the way he presented God's word, he totally dis I mean totally I mean he was preaching the exact opposite of what Matthew 6 1 through 4 says. Yeah, it was just it was just so far off base. He was glorifying the fact that they were giving away gas at a gas pump. Even though he was trying to say they were being generous, they were boasting about yeah. what they were doing. There was no testimony that I to I was told that was going to happen. That wasn't a testimony. No. That was nothing but a boast. It was boastful. about absolutely what they were doing for people at a gas pump. It wasn't a, it wasn't necessarily a needy person. It was just a person. It was just a person. It was just a person. And they were boasting about it. And just, I mean, <clears throat> just on the video, it was money after money after money. It was just, let me see, let me show you how much money we can fork out, you know, just to <coughs> and whoever. I, and how much money did he say they give away? Over a thousand dollars? Like a, like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in gas and gas cards and all of this? Yeah. During that during that time yeah i mean i'm just like going really but see in matthew 6 but, it says not it says to do it in secret when you do something you do it in secret because god is the one that's going to reward you not man and they're all clapping and hooping and hollering <coughs> in this church yeah i never got off my seat whenever they were hooping and hollering yeah you know, and talking about a check in your spirit, <coughs> I got it when I met the pastor because when he said something about structured, and I thought, oh gracious, I was ready to leave then, but I walked, followed my husband into the building. But there was a reason that we had uh -huh. to go and, and endure we torture. Had to, we had, <laughs> and it was because we know the difference between God. the fake that this pastor and this whole church is a part of. Oh my This gosh. fake church. We saw it immediately. I mean, it was it was so clear to me. I was outside and, the doors. Yeah. I mean, it's so clear that, and I'm going, I don't know why we got to be here. And I was trying to figure out how to get out of there, you know, after we had gotten in there without causing a scene or anything. But... <laughs> I thought uh, Melvin but, was going to turn over the temple tables. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was it was just horrible. 
you know, it, as far as uh, how I felt, I was just, I, uh, I was, honestly, I was nauseated. I was, I was, I almost raised my hand to say, can I please share something? Yeah. And I was it, almost. But it, they wouldn't have been receptive. No, not at all. Not. I wanted to share what God has done in our testimony. Our tr- what, a true the testimony, uh, the testimony of of how God put me and Michelle together to be one with Him, you know, that is a testimony. The twelve things that's happened on our wedding day, you can't refute unless you're like the associate pastor. When I started sharing some of those things, he said, "I don't get it." <laughs> you know, it's because he don't get and God. The, and the couple that. We met at Wendy's. If we hadn't have gone to this church service and left when we did, we were actually walking out of Wendy's, and they were coming up into mm-hmm. the drive-through, yep. and they stopped because they saw our shirts. The shirt says, both Lit- of our shirts says, "Live, live a, a God, God story. story." Live a God story. They stopped us, and I immediately knew. We've got to talk. So I say, I bend down and I said, y'all come inside and let's talk. And then they saw your hat. And they saw that I got a Mississippi State hat on and they're from Mississippi and I'm from Mississippi. So they got out of the line. They're like, yeah, sure. (laughs) They got out of the line and came inside and we got to share what God was telling us to share. They shared their the testimony whole... with us as well. Exactly. It was awesome. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of things we had in common that we had <coughs> been through or experienced or, you know. And it's and it's just really funny that all of that happened, but we had to endure the test of the fire. Oh, good gosh. Mark 9:49 to get that fire you know, that fire in your belly that you know something's not right. I was nauseated. You know <laughs> that something's not right when you experience that kind of ex- experience with God. You immediately realize something's just not mm-hmm. right. Nope. I got to leave. I can't even listen to this. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was it was I mean when 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 your eyes are open to God's word and what it says and a real relationship with God. And then you turn around and you have to listen to crap. <laughs> That's you. Excuse me. Um you know, you listen to somebody completely take God's word and I mean throw it out the window and say, "All right, here's my version." And that's what he did. Yeah. Because he completely disregarded what Matthew 6 says. It's in red letters. It's what Jesus said. And you don't even have that part in the scripture of what you're saying about generosity and giving. And that is what Jesus said about teaching. It's teaching about giving to the needy is what the passage is called. Right. And he didn't, I mean, it was so far off base you know so. it, it's it's just really sad that these people in in this in this church are so we've got a couple of friends that go to that church mm. and uh, they're like it's awesome it's awesome you should come you should come you know blah 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 and the one time that God specifically says, go to this church and give your testimony, and they won't allow it to happen because they have to show this video that I'm going, are you kidding me? This is what you have to show, and God has called me to come to this church and share this with you guys because god was outside that that building yeah and that's exactly right you know michelle just hit it on the head god's not in that church no not in that church at all they have the warm and fuzzy but it ain't god it is not at all of anything about god god's name is used 
but it is slandered so bad it's unbelievable friends they have pushed him out the door to get what they want you know this is the same church that this this lady that we met a couple of weeks ago said that they in two week two weeks or two two and a half weeks yep they raised over a million dollars for the piece of land to build a new church on and i'm going wow Mm. wow 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 yep but anyway that's all i got i uh, it's just (laughs) um, wow End it, babe. End yep. it, end it, end it. All right, guys. I think that's all we have for tonight. My nauseated feeling has left the building because we did. So I think I'm okay now. Yeah. And it's just the insight that God has given us because of where we stand with him. It's just absolutely amazing. And when he showed Melvin the 675 repeatedly, we knew something was up. And something we need what it was needed yeah. to find out what it was after we were able to uh share our testimony with that couple and they shared it with us and you know god revealed it so pretty amazing stuff you know I, i'll add this and i, I think i kind of touched on it just a minute ago but you know it's amazing that um that god will lead you down a path and you don't know where you're going on this path, you know. Um, this is the second time, or the second church that we've been inside since uh, October the 27th of 2019. The next time that we step foot in a church is February the 20th of 2022. Mm-hmm. That was 848 days apart. And from uh, February the 20th of 2022 to today, which is June the um, 8th, 8th, is 109 days apart. And if you read Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, and in knowing knowing that verse and the number of days from the first time that we stepped foot back in church in February to today at a different church, you know, leaving that church tonight it was just disheartening to me because I knew that God wanted us to share our testimony and both are three different pastors, two at one church and two at the first church that I went to, immediately shut it down and would not allow it. The first church that we stepped foot back into on February the 20th of 2022. I was hoping you'd tell that one. <clears throat> the first day that we stepped foot in that church <laughs> at the end of the service I share our testimony or part of some testimony that had happened with the message that he was given and what God had done the day before mm-hmm. it was one and the same yep. and I shared that with, with them and they received it awesomely oh yeah and the pastor didn't even hesitate to allow me to stand in front of his congregation Mm -hmm. and tell this because he god moved on his heart before i even got there Mm -hmm. you know about this yep you know what pastor allows somebody that they've never seen before in their life to get up and share a testimony you know the first day the very first time you lay they lay eyes on you Mm -hmm. and then you go to and this church had 13 people in it and you go to one of these mega churches like today and they're so structured 
they can't allow the Holy Spirit to move inside that service Absolutely. because they have to have so much control over every part mm-hmm. of that church that that they they got to know who's doing what mm-hmm. and where the money is going and all of this kind of stuff. And the first pastor that I talked to today was worse than the second one, in my opinion. I mean, their their grip on on stuff is so hard and so clenched, white knuckled. Oh yeah, it's not even possible for for God to pry their fa- pry their hands open. No. There's I mean, no possible way. I can, I can almost guarantee you that both of those pastors are going to bust hell wide open. Absolutely. Well, when wide he's not when open. he's not preaching correctly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just one 30 minute service that we had to endure, <clears throat> and, and he's not even sitting preaching for scripture. An hour and a half in the church in the pastor's office this more or this afternoon or this morning, whatever it was, and him saying it's okay for a gay couple to care for a child. Nope. Seriously. Nope. Where'd that come from? Where is that okay in the Bible? No, 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 no. Nope. Anyway, we gotta go. <laughs> I could preach for a while longer. We can, we can. Uh, going. You know, you know, it, and and I'll end it right here. It's eleven thirty-eight. You know, Hebrews eleven. I mean, thirteen eight says, "God is the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. forever." And why would God change? And it be okay with gays to care for children, you know. He's not okay with gays. And that and that's an abomination in God's eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't teach God because they're living in a total sin. Absolutely. You know, these pastors that it's okay with. And this was a Baptist church, by the way. How can they be okay with this? It's it's just oh my gosh. Anyway, I gotta stop. <laughs> <clears throat> I do believe that was the end of this one for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, y'all have a good uh, good rest of your evening. I hope you uh, enjoy this. I hope, hope you can it, get something out of it. I think there's a big, big, big lesson here to be learned, and that is understanding um, how God works and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. And when you know something's wrong, you get up and leave without questioning what the Holy Spirit is telling you. If you get that check in your spirit and you want confirmation, go to your go to God's Word. He'll show you. Absolutely. He will absolutely confirm it to you when you get that check in your spirit. But the main thing is you have to get your life right with God and have that relationship first and foremost. Absolutely. Guys, we'll see you on the next video. Have a good night. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.